good morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Steve. It's good to have all of you here on this Palm Sunday Sunday. Um, there are a number of announcements in your worship folder. The main one being that this week is Holy Week. And so we have Monday, Thursday services at noon and 6. We have Good Friday service at noon and 6. And next Sunday, Easter Sunday, we have a 6 a.m. and then again 8 and 10.30 services on Easter Sunday. So that's pretty exciting. Um, we are also excited th today because we have a, a special guest preacher, uh, Reverend James Colley from uh, uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Cotton Tree, Liberia is here to share the message of God's hope and grace and forgiveness with us. So we, uh, we're blessed by him being here. We will, he will be leading our adult Bible class following the service. So if you'd like to stick around and, and hear more from, from James, that would, we'd love to have you stick around. Um, those are, I think, my announcements. I know you have a few. Good morning. So today, the youth, this is confirmation and senior high youth, are going bowling at Jack's house from four to six. Um, the cost of that is $10. That covers shoe rental, a uh, glass of soda, and lanes for two hours. And then my last announcement is the Egg My Yard fundraiser the youth are doing. Today is the last day to order your eggs. We will hide them next Saturday, and then people can find them Sunday morning. So the flyer for that's in your bulletin, and there is an order form on the back side of that flyer. So if you want to fill that out and get it back to me, or you can give me a phone call and we can get eggs ordered that way as well. Thank you. Please stand. We begin our service this morning on page two of your worship folder. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, Grant that we may ever hail him as our king, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, through the same Jesus Christ, our, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he had called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are, going, are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. We stay standing as we sing our next hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, and I encourage you to, uh, to hold your palm branches at this time as we, as we sing this song of what would normally be a song of procession.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. At this time, we look at our own selves and our own sinful condition as we read together the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall, you shall not commit, commit adultery. adultery. You, you shall, shall not steal. steal. You, you shall, shall not, not give false give testimony against, against your neighbor. neighbor. You, you shall, shall not covet, covet your neighbor's house. You, you shall, shall not covet, covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, maid his ox or donkey, or, donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What is confession? Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins and second, that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness, from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. Which are these? Consider your place in life according to the Ten Commandments. Are you a father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, or worker? Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Have you been hot-tempered, rude, or quarrelsome? Have you hurt someone by your words or deeds? Have you stolen, been ne negligent, wasted anything, or done any harm? What is the office of the keys? The office of the keys is that special authority which Christ has given to his church on earth to forgive the sins of repentant sinners, but to withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. Where is this written? This is what St. John the Evangelist writes in chapter 20. The Lord Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. 
What do you believe according to these words? I believe that when the called ministers of Christ deal with us by his divine command, in particular when they exclude openly unrepentant sinners from the Christian congregation and absolve those who repent of their sins and want to do better, this is just as valid and certain, even in heaven, as if Christ our dear Lord dealt with us himself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. To God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I acknowledge my sin to you. And I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Forgive me all my sins and grant me the power of your Holy Spirit that I may amend my sinful life. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, on this day your Son entered the holy city, Jerusalem, to fulfill your will by his death on the cross. Help us to follow him through this week and all our days that we may be drawn closer to you by a faith full of knowledge of the sacrifice and victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this Palm Sunday is taken from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, 
because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for Holy Week, according to St. Mark, the 14th and 15th chapters. Please remain seated until you are instructed to stand. Glory to you, O Lord. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly. And she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was this ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? And he said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, they took bread. And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, 
This is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank it. And he said to them, This is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink it again, uh, drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but you will. And he came and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping. For their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came to them a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when they came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew a sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let scriptures be fulfilled, and they all left and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him, but he left the, lo the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many bore false witness against him but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this testimony they did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is this that these men testify against you? But he remained silent, 
and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garment and said, What further witness do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and strike him, saying, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know or understand what you mean. And they went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man was one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster, rooster crowed a second time, and Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast, of he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak and twisted a crown of thorns and put it on him, and they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him and stripped him of the purple cloak, they put his own clothes on him and led him out to be crucified. Please stand. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. 
and they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on the right and one on the left. And those who pass, passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him, saying, You saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may believe and see. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was a darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And some ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, among who were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and the younger and of Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should be, have already died, and summoning, summonsing a, the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him into the tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, an honor again to be here at Zion today. Uh, maybe two years ago, I was here, and it's always an honor if you have me come here. And I want to say thank you to Pastor Benson for uh, talking to you and your approval that I can come to share Christ with us. Today text is the gospel we heard, a long reading with many stuff in it. There seems to be really many stuff in the text. Maybe we can argue on which one we can talk about to be a point, even though today is Palm Sunday. Some people will be considering different, different things in here. Well, today, as it is Palm Sunday, so we can emphasize maybe on Sunday of the Passion, or maybe just wait and see, uh, Good Friday uh, is just next door. Why don't we just Forget about the many stuff that day that has connection with Mount Thursday and Good Friday. And concentrate on something different. And again, as I went through the text, I also saw something that could be like the trial that was read, the trial of our Lord Jesus before Pontius Pilate. His crucifixion, his death, and burial. Yes, many stuff in the text. But let us see here. A gospel reading is quite huge. 14 and 15 chapters of Mike. So many verses in there. When I went through finally, I concluded just the simple one that we can understand. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes, the king of life. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The intro begins, uh, begins and ends with those beautiful words. Those words are true whether they are spoken at Christmas at the baptism of Jesus, at the entry into Jerusalem, as he is taken to Pontius Pilate, or as he hangs on the cross, blessed is he. For he is righteous, and he comes in the name of the law for one single purpose, and that is to bring all sinners to all sinners, salvation. Salvation is important in the mission of Jesus, and that's why he came. So blessed is he who entered Jerusalem for one purpose, to save us from our sins by dying on the cross. Blessed is Jesus who stood before Pilate as a common criminal, even though he didn't commit any crime. But for you and for me, he came. He was crucified, suffered, and died to save us from our sins. A few weeks ago, when Pastor Benz and I discussed my coming here, I explained to him, I said, I like Palm Sunday. In fact, Lenten season is one of my most favorite seasons that I see in the calendar of the church year because it's the open gate to my salvation and to the salvation of the world. If Jesus didn't come, if Jesus didn't die, if Jesus didn't go through this season as we all walk with him to the cross, 
we would not be talking about salvation today. So all other one, yes, we see Easter, which gave the completion of this victory to the Lord Jesus for us. Lenten set the page and leads our attention to that. So we should be happy to have such a wonderful Savior. St. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth about Jesus and why? Blessed is he. He is very clear when he wrote, for Jews demand science and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified because that gives us victory over our Satan and death and the devil. A few verses later, Paul repeat his intention as a pastor to the Corinthians church. For I have decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. It doesn't matter today that we are not Corinthians. It doesn't matter what Sunday we come here for. He said, my way of preaching Christ and he crucified today is to look at the encounter that Jesus had with Pontius Pilate. We read in Mark chapter 15 that the religious leader bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. Pilate began to question Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? And sure, the king of the Jews, that's why he's blessed for. The king of the Jews and the king of the world. A king who gives life by giving his life for all. That was the charge that the Jews had brought against Jesus. They told Pilate that Jesus was a threat to the government. You are the governor here. Will you sit down, this guy come and overthrow you? They give him examples to try to support their charge against Jesus. I can imagine they referred his triumph and entry into Jerusalem and the words of the crowds. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Perhaps they suggested to Pilate that Jesus could call on his followers to start rebellions against the Roman government. Jesus did not defend himself against these charges. His kingdom is not of this world. Out of frustration, Pilate asked Jesus, have you no answer to give to me? See how many charges they bring against you. Today in our world, as we live, we have those very religious leaders who bring charges against Jesus and his followers. Even today, as we sit in the U.S., I share with him yesterday on the way coming. I see, I see every trouble in the church of God in the U.S. is the same trouble for us across the world. Where so many laws are coming up against the church. Talking about genders. Where you have to pray and try to avoid the use of the amen. Or maybe you will have to say a man or a woman. What a terrible thing. I read they reading the scripture when they sit in high offices and say they are Christian, but they are not following what the scripture says. God is looking to you, believing in you to speak out and stand for your faith. It seemed to us 
He looks to us. Yes, they thought that the death of Jesus would free them if only they truly knew all the charges that were about to be brought against Jesus. We preach that Christ was not crucified because of the charges brought against him before Pilate. Jesus said to his disciples, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He also said to them, for this reason my father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down of my own accord. Jesus was not crucified because he was a threat to the Roman government. He did not die because of the charges brought against him by the Jewish leader. Jesus gave his life. He laid it down because of God's charges against all of us sinners. What charges you ask? Let me begin with these words from Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. Perhaps the words we know best and get tired of hearing, get tired of hearing, are Paul's words from Romans chapter 3. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yes, all have sinned. There's not a single one who is guiltless, who will say, I have not sinned, I have done nothing, because we all are guilty, and for which he came, and not the charges that he was put under. These words charge you and me with sinning against God, for we are part of the all have sinned. We would just as soon not hear these charges because the truth hurts. If we want sacrifice charges or specific charges, excuse me, we wouldn't need to go to the commandments that God gave us. We have not perfectly kept God's first in our lives. Use his name in only the pursuit of ways. And having hunger and taste for his word. In fact, heaven, in fact, haven't we been guilty of bringing false charges against Jesus? Haven't we been jealous that Jesus claims to know what is best for us during their time? When we have seen Jesus on the cross, but didn't believe that he could serve us alone, with, alone from our sins. Don't we mock Jesus by pretending that his words are for other people and not for us when we come to church? Haven't we forsaken Jesus because we wanted to please to please the crowd, instead of sharing our faith, we give in the old theme. There are two things we should not talk about. The religion is one of them, the Christian religion. Jesus is the savior who is about to be hanged on the tree for you and for me. On this Palm Sunday, he entered into Jerusalem, shouting of voices all behind him, pretending to honor him like we do sometimes. Yes, we are guilty, but no, we are not charged. Even though we go astray, even though we sin, even though we are guilty and should hear the same of our sins, we are not charged. 
even before the Son of God came into the world. The prophet Isaiah wrote about how our sins will be transformed or transferred to Jesus Christ. Isaiah wrote, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity, iniquity of all of us. For our sake, God made Jesus Christ to be sin, even though he knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In the heavenly court, Christ was charged with our sins, so that through his suffering and death, we might live and be free from sin. In Colossians chapter 2, St. Paul puts it this way. And you who were dead in your, trespass, your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made a life together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of death that stood against us. With the legal demand, this he set aside, meeting it, nearing it to the cross. If our sins were charged against us, we could not stand before God. But in his passion, Christ was charged with our sins. He was for, forsaken so that we could be made alive to live as God's beloved children. Jesus Christ suffered and died so that we could be free from the power of sin and free from the verdict we deserve. Satan's joy would be to take each one of us to God with a list of our sins. He would love to charge us with every one of them so that God will have a choice but to condemn us. No choice but to condemn us. Praise be to God that this is not possible anymore. You are now related to Christ. His death is your death. His resurrection is your resurrection. Satan has no more charges against you because they have been canceled through the suffering and death of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Why it is so important that we preach Christ and he crucified? Why is it so important that we understand that Jesus suffered and died because of our sins? It's important because it is how God revealed his love to us through his son. God has revealed himself to you in the suffering and death of his son, Jesus Christ. God is love. In this God has shown his love to us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the payment for our sins. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed as found at the bottom of page 12. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness with which you bless us through your and all your creation. Above all, however, we give you thanks that you sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to be our true King, your suffering servant whose death delivers us and all believers from sin, death, and hell. Give us your grace that we may be faithful in our walk and in our hope, love, and worship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Inspire your whole church throughout the world to rightly hear and follow Jesus, our eternal King and Lord, in humble faith with thanksgiving. Give wisdom and grace to all pastors that they give themselves to the living and live pro lively proclamation of your law and gospel through which you truly work, saving repentance and faith in many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give your grace, forgiveness, wisdom, and guidance to all who bear the offices of governments in our nation and throughout the world. Lead them to the faithful exercise of their authority for peace and justice and for the defense and liberty of all people, especially the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Give peace and patience, comfort and healing to all who suffer illness and adversity or who are in sorrow or in need. Especially we pray for Jay, Todd, Earl, Isaiah, Dee, Patty, Dale, Galen, Joy, Sharon, Lori, Ted, Kevin, Jim, Grant, Mary, Jana, Mike, Elaine, Nona, Doug, Kimberly, Ron, Kathy, Rob, Irene, Carol, Joyce, TJ, Phyllis, Todd, Lil, Claudia, Barb, Pastor Collins, Opal, Mary, Taya, Joyce, Libby, Lena, Deb, Walter, Elizabeth, David, Yvonne, Kelly, Gary, John, Lorraine, Richard, Nancy, and all others that we hold in our heart we also pray that you would be with all who celebrate birthdays this week with Norman and Madison, Donna, Andrea, Randy, Keith, Selvin, Rosella, Myra, Tracy, and Ken. Deliver all who endure persecu persecution for their faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served your, you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors, and especially we pray for the family of Gordy Schulke who passed away this past Sunday and who will be laid to rest here on Tuesday. Keep us in the fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn, Jesus, Refuge of the Weary. <laughs> 